In this video, we're going to tie a fly called the Clouser Crayfish. First thing we're going to do is start with the TMCO 5263 streamer hook and some 030 lead wire. And we're just going to put a strip of lead wire across the whole entire shank there. Then we're going to take some Vivas 6 aught white thread we'll just wrap through the wire a few times it doesn't have to be pretty just needs to keep the wire from moving there we are next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie the mouth portion of the fly. For that we're just going to use some pheasant tail. We're going to take some pheasant tail fibers and we're going to cut off a clump of about a dozen or so. We're going to tie them in so they're about half the length of the shank of the hook. Maybe just a little less. You don't want to make these too long. And trim those out of there. Now the next thing we're going to tie in are going to be the eyes. Now you can make your own eyes, or you can use the pre-made EP Puglisi eyes. I'm going to use some black eyes in a size large. We're just going to tie these on each side of the hook. We're going to tie them all the way back to where we tied in our tail, and I like to kind of push them kind of kink them outward just a little bit. And we tie one on each side of the fly. and you'll end up with two black eyes just like that now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our furry foam we're going to use light all of furry foam and you want to make sure you tie it in in the direction and cut the strip in the direction that it stretches you can see here I cut it long ways with the stretch that's what I'm looking for we tie it so it or we cut it so it's about just a little wider than the hook gap I'm just going to tie that in right on top of the fly all the way back to the eyes. And just let it hang off the back. <clears throat> now the next thing we're going to do is tie in some, some dubbing. Here we're looking to create a dubbing kind of ball at the back of the fly. And you can use a lot of different kinds of dubbings for this. I like to use a synthetic dubbing in a sand color for this fly. You can use like an Antron or a Hairtron dubbing. We're using kind of an Antron blend here and it's more of a tannish sand color. We're going to tie in a nice large ball of dubbing right here at the back of the fly. This is going to be where our claws are tied in. The reason you put a ball in the back here is so that your claws kind of stick out to each side just as a crayfish would. There we are. Now for our claws, you can use a few different feathers or materials for this. You want to pick a feather that has quite long barbs. And one of the best ones for that is a mallard flank feather. So you're going to pull out a couple matching mallard feathers, about the same size. Just 
Sometimes you kind of have to rifle through the package a little bit to find two that are roughly the same size. Helps if you buy a large package of mallard. So you can kind of dig through and find some of the larger feathers. Save some of the smaller ones for later. Once we've pulled our two mallard feathers out here, I'm going to strip off most of the fluff at the bottom of the feathers. Then you can roughly match them up, just kind of get them close here. Then we're going to trim out a little notch right at the tips of each of those mallard feathers. And we're going to take those mallard feathers and we're going to lay them in. We want our our legs or our claws to be oh, about the length of the shank of the hook. And I just lay them on each side. Sometimes they get a little out of whack. Do a loose wrap over the top of them. Sometimes they curl on you a little bit. Let's try again here. Got a pair here that is not cooperating with me. There we are, it's a little better. And you can kind of split them with your furry foam, and if kind of what we're looking for is just some legs just like that. Lash them down, make sure they're nice and tight, and they're not going to come out of there. Usually I wrap all the way back to the dubbing ball. That really helps stand them up. Now the next thing to do is to continue to dub the, the head of the fly. So we're going to use same dubbing here. We're just going to continue to kind of build the thorax or the head. So I kind of want to mash up the, the dubbing with the claws in that initial dubbing ball. And then I'll just kind of finish it off here. I want my head to be about 30% of this fly. Once I have my head built, I'm just going to pull my furry foam forward here. I'm going to just slightly, slightly stretch it. Do a nice tight wrap with my thread and then lay several wraps right underneath it. I'll end up with Something that looks just like that. Then you can fold the furry foam kind of back out of the way. We're going to take a grizzly feather. You can use a grizzly feather from a whiting bugger pack. You can use a rooster cape feather. Either one. You can also use a brown feather for this as well. I like the grizzly color gives the fly a little bit of variation. We're going to tie it in by the stem at the thick portion of the feather. It 
Then we're going to take our dubbing here. We're actually going to take our thread up near the front of the fly here. A little bit counterintuitive than how you tie a regular fly. We're going to dub it from the front of the eye here down to our tie-in point where we tied in our feather. And we're just going to taper this just like a crayfish. Kind of thinner at the, the tail, which would be the eye of our fly. And then getting thicker as we go back to the, to the head. down the dubbing fairly thick as I get towards the head here. Dub just behind my feather here, if I can get my dubbing to cooperate with me. I really want to make that tie in point from around that hackle feather kind of invisible. So I'll dub, I'll dub around that really quick. And we'll just kind of finish off here just a little bit to even up the taper. Just leave our thread kind of right in front of our foam. Then I'm going to take my grizzly hackle feather and I'm going to wrap that feather forward. Kind of spiraling it forward as I go. I'm going to stop just short of the eye, and then I'm going to attach my hackle plier and just let it let it hang there. And then I'm going to trim that grizzly hackle on the top, kind of giving it a flat a flat head. I'm going to take my thread. I'm just going to very lightly wrap it through some of that hackle there. I'm going to take my furry foam and wrap over the top of it, very lightly stretching it. Then I'll take my thread and slowly work it forward one more wrap. And I'll pull my furry foam just a little bit tighter. This will gently taper the furry foam. Then I'll take my thread one more wrap. And then I'll pull the furry foam even tighter so, making a nice tapered kind of top on it. And I'll lift the furry foam up and I'll wrap again and capture my hackle with a couple wraps. Then I'll get in here and just trim out the 
the stem of the hackle. Finish off the head with a few wraps. There's always a few kind of trapped fibers to hackle. You can just trim those, trim those right out of there. You can whip finish. And now we're going to take our head here. And we're just going to pull it nice and taut. And we're going to trim it so that I kind of end up with a little tail piece. So you can see I want it to be about that long, but as I stretch it, that piece stretches. So I want to trim it just a little longer than you think you need to. Then it'll kind of all suck back into shape there. Then I'm going to take that furry foam and I'm going to work it just around the eye of the hook. Just like that. And the tail will kind of sit down. You can kind of groom your your claws here. And that is a Clouser crayfish. Very deadly little pattern. It can be fished as a streamer. It can also be dead drift. Kind of like a crippled craw in the current. I've had some really good luck dead drifting this fly um, for big trout and big slow pools. Uh, makes a good lead fly. Um, pretty easy to tie, not too difficult. Um, doesn't really look very fancy, but uh, a really fishy pattern. And that is the Clouser Crayfish.